Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Sheikh, in our previous discussions, we've discussed, uh, you know, Salah, we've discussed the different Ruqans, we've discussed Sujood, Ruku, Qunut, uh, we discussed after the Salah, the Tashahud, the Taslim, and, and we also discussed the Taqibat. My question for you, Sheikhna, is while I'm in the Salah, is there anything that I can do to cause it to become invalid, to become batil? A'udhu billah, as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin. There are 12 cases in which uh, Salah will invalidate by uh, implementing and applying these 12 cases. Um, so I begin with the first one, and that is, I think we've mentioned this in, in some episodes about uh, the effect and uh, the influence of, of, the, of this act. And that is uh, the ghasub, or when someone prays in a usurped place, in a usurped, let's say, property or land, that will cause the salah to be batil. Um, and of course, uh, we mentioned this hukum that if somebody knew that before he prays, during his, his prayer and after his prayer. So we mentioned the hukum in detail in the, some pre pre previous uh, episodes. So and anyhow, if somebody learns, even in the salah, that the place he is praying um, is usurped, his salah is batil. So he, to, he must leave this place immediately and find somewhere else that is permissible and allowed and performs his, his salah and prayer. The second invalidator is um, the act of spoiling the wudu or okay. ghusl. In other words, you do something that your wudu becomes batil. Oh, and I see, I see. as a result, the salah will be batil as well. Okay, okay. So, for example, breaking wind, okay. urine, and, and so forth. So doing, doing while you're in salah? Yes, of course, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Or even before salah. Because if you break Your wudu. Uh, the wudu before salah, mm -hmm. you can't pray. And yes. if you pray the salah, is batil. batil. Yes, You're yes. praying without wudu. Yes. So you have to make sure that uh, you do the wudu and you start the salah again uh, with purity and cleanness. So that's the second one. Um, the third act in which makes the salah batil is when the one folds his hands and prays, okay. as the Sunnis do, the non Shia do. Um, and as the, uh, it's mentioned here, which is to place the hands over another across the body. That act of takfir, as it says in, 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 in Arabic, takfir uh, al to fold your hands, that will cause the salah to be batal. That's nothing to do in salah. And that is not part of the Sunnah of the Prophet as they, they claim. Even in the time of Abu Bakr, there was no f hand folding and praying. Yes, it's it came in the time of Umar ibn Khattab. Indeed. I mean, we know that from the, the Maliki school of thought, they're Sunni, but they pray with their hands by their sides. They don't fold exactly. their hands. So it was innovated as a bid'ah in the time of Umar when he saw some Iranian captives okay. folding their hands and they brought to before his, his, uh, his meeting place. And then he said, okay, let's have it in salah as well. It's a nice thing that we respect Allah in this way. We don't accept such a thing. Uh, the tashri' and uh, the legislation must be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet. Ahsan. No one has the right to legislate something in religion. That is called bid'ah or innovation. So folding your hands in salah is a bid'ah, innovation. It's haram and forbidden and will make your salah batil. Um, the fourth act, which is also bid'ah and innovated in salah, again by the non-Shia, is to say Amin in salah after Surah oh, Al-Hamd. So, yeah, yes, again, indeed, that indeed. will make the salah batil as well. So we have to avoid it. The exception is for both the folding hands and the Amin 
is in the time of taqiyya. Okay. When you're in danger, yes. um, uh, situation is life-threatening, then you can fold your hands and say amin with them because uh, you want to save your life and uh, stay alive. And that's exception, which is known as taqiyya, as I've mentioned many times. The fifth one is when you turn back uh, to the qibla. So let's say if the qibla is straight this way, you turn the other side, direction. opposite direction, and you pray, your back is towards the Qibla. So you are no longer facing the Qibla. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That will cause the Salah be uh, batil, and um, you have to repeat the Salah again. Sheikh, when facing the Qibla, we are allowed a little bit of uh, flexibility, aren't we? I think it's 45 degrees, 45 degrees each side. That is when I don't know um, exactly what the exact uh, uh, Jihya or direction of the Qibla. And the hadith says that بين المشرق والمغرب قبلة for the one who prayed but he didn't know the exact uh, direction of the Qibla. So if you prayed between the, mash uh, the Mashriq, uh, the east and the west, between these two sides or uh, directions, the Qibla will be there and accepted. Okay. But we, if we know exactly the, the direction, we should pray the yes. exactly towards the Qibla. Uh, but if somebody never knew about it, he prayed in the wrong direction, then this is the maximum and this is the limit. Okay. But if he passes this limit, then he has to do the salah again, okay. as I mentioned, yes. uh, to uh, turn one's back and to the qibla and pray on the yes. other side. Sorry, please and carry on. Yes, uh, just one more left. Uh, lastly, to utter words other than the dhikr. Okay. So to talk in the salah in overall. So talking uh, in the Salah, in any language, even in Arabic, will cause the Salah to be batil. Other than reading Quran, which is Hamd and Surah, or Dhikr, SubhanAllah, or Alhamdulillah, and so forth. So if you talk in Salah, let's say, if you say to somebody, you know, open the door, mm -hmm. and you continue. That open the door, or iftah al bab in Arabic, yeah. that will cause the Salah to be batil. Oh. You can't talk in Salah at all. You are in a restricted mode and phase of Worship and ibadah. It's like fasting. You can't eat or uh, drink anything. You drink or you eat, you break your fast. Likewise, if you talk in salah, uh, the salah will be void and batil. Ahsan, ahsan. Sheikhna, what if I say something by accident? What if I, you know, it's just, I don't know, maybe when I was getting up from sujood to qiyam and I'm like, oof, you know what I mean? It's, it's quite, you know, difficult or something like that. Or if I'm in, in pain and, and, and something comes out by accident. Does that render the salah batil? If you say two letters in a word, uh, which is at least um, or more, and it was unintentional, that's fine. As long as it is not intentional and uh, deliberate, then the salah is correct and sahih. Um, otherwise, if you say even one letter, which means in Arabic, a whole word. Let's say we have a word in, in um, uh, I think I mentioned the Quran as well. Qaw anfusakum. Qaw is qaf and waw and alif. Qaf, qah means to, to protect. Qaw mm -hmm. means protect yourself and your family. In, in plural, so in jama'. So qaf, if you say qaf and you mean by this to protect or to refrain, for example, that will make your salah batil, uh -huh. deliberately, of course. Or if you say two, two letters, as you mentioned, ah or ah, deliberately that will make your salah also batil. But if it was unintentional, that's, that's fine. The salah is correct and, and, and valid. Sheikh, what if I um, want to communicate with someone? Maybe there's a danger or something's happening, maybe there's someone at the door. And what I do, instead of saying something, I continue to re recite my dhikr, but I change it a little bit. I may say my dhikr a little bit louder, or uh, you know, say, or, or like um, put some more emphasis on my dhikr, so they notice that he, he, you know so I'm trying to tell them something. Um, does that render the salah batil? If you say this with the intention of dhikr, with the intention of uh, being a, a part of the dhikr, so let's say somebody knocks the door and nobody notices or nobody listens to the doorbell. Yes. And you, 
it's only the one who was you who listened to the doorbell, then you can say Allahu Akbar, for example, to open the door, for example, yes. just to alert them that yes. to open the door. Allahu mm -hmm. Akbar is part of the dhikr that you can say in, in salah, it's mustahab to say la ilaha illallah, as I mentioned in, yes. in some places, for example, subhanallah, these are mustahab dhikr, you can mention them in, in, in salah. Um, so to raise your voice a bit, that's fine, to alert them, there's no issue, but as I've said, if you say open the door, iftah al then <laughs> that will make your salah batil because these words are outside the salah. Yes. They're not Quran or dhikr. No. Sheikh, what about, I'm sure a lot of the, the brothers and sisters, you know, go through this, is um, coughing and sneezing in Salah. Um, you know, we live in a, in a country that has, you know, the weather never makes its mind up, unfortunately, and obviously causes, causes us to, um, you know, uh, get ill. And maybe we're, while we're praying Salah, we start to cough. Uh, what if we sneeze? Are we supposed to say, you know, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, after we sneeze in Salah? Uh, what, what's supposed to be done? There is no objection with regard to coughing or sneezing in Salah. This is part of the human's nature, you know, especially those who are, let's say, they catch cold, for example. Um, that's fine. You can sneeze, uh, have cough, but if somebody, let's say, had some kind of pain and he says, ah, or ah, or ouch, for example, yes. saying those, these two letters in Salah will make the Salah void and batil. Deliberately, of course. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful that we just have it up to the limit of, let's say, the sneeze or the cough. And we don't utter these two letters, the ah or oh or ah, and so forth. Sheikhna, is it okay to um, repeat certain words a certain number of times in salah? Or are we restricted to how many times we can say something in salah? If it's the dhikr specifically. Repeating a word or an ayah in salah, that's fine. There's no objection with it. Uh, you're allowed to repeat uh, uh, the word or the ayah in which you feel that as a precaution, you haven't done it properly. You might have missed harakah or something or, or a letter, for example. That's fine. You go back and you repeat it. There's no objection with it. However, if it became, as the Sayyid mentions, the repeat was... On the, on the ground of obsession and waswasa. Okay. In which there are some people, uh, God forbid, you know, they have the problem with waswasa. Obsessed with, you know, uh, with the issues of salah and they are very precautions. Um, they repeat, they do the wudu. Sometimes they do wudu for 15 minutes just mm -hmm. to make sure the wudu is complete. Salah for half an hour, repeating each word. Oh, Imagine Allah, 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 Allahu Akbar, for example. Those, those are, I think the best way to describe those people are that they're over uh, suspicious and, and, and not confident in themselves that they've performed the, the duties correctly. Exactly. So if it reaches this level of waswasa, that you repeat each word or each ayah, and the, rep the repetition was, let's say, more than more than normality, then in this case, the salah will be batil. Sadly, the, um, the salah will, will be, uh, in this case, void. And this person must repeat the salah. And according to some narrations, that the imam says this is of shaitan. Oh. This is part of the devil. Yes. So you shouldn't follow the devil. Mm -hmm. You should follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ignore the shaitan and ignore this waswasa and just keep on. Don't repeat. Just go. Go, uh, okay. go ahead with the, with the, with the sure. recitation, with the recur okay. sujood. Don't just repeat and stop in the salah. Otherwise, the shaitan will overwhelm and, and takes over. Na'udhu billah. Shaykhna, um, what about if, you know, in, in, the, in the surah, if there's an ayah that I like, there's an ayah that helps me get close to God, there's an ayah that, you know, I, I want to emphasize on. So I repeat it two, three times. Is that okay? Or that, that shouldn't be done neither? As I've said, um, to repeat it, let's say twice or three times, that's fine. Just to make sure I, I perform the salah with the correct recitation mm -hmm. or dhikr, that's fine. But as I've said, if it was reaching the level of waswasa obsessively, yes. in this case, the salah will be batil. As a precaution, mm -hmm. the say it says, the salah will be batil. So I have to avoid it. And if we have observed uh, the recitation well before the salah, if we learned 
especially attending the majalis of Quran in the month yes. of Ramadan, listening to the Quran from the, uh, let's say, the, the TV and watching and from the TV or listening from the MP3 and so forth. Yes. I think that will help a lot uh, for those who want to uh, read the Quran accurately in, in Salah. Thank you, Sheikh Ra, and thank you to all the viewers for joining us on Ihqam SOS. Please, please be careful in your salah. Make sure you don't, you know, do make it invalid, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode of Ihqam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.